All right, so this question right here, we are solving uh, for n, and we have to use the permutation formula. So you guys learned in 11.1 .1 here the permutation formula, and um, you know, we can go back to the textbook here real quick on that. Where is it? Uh, oh, that's not good. Oh, not there either. Did I? So the formula looks like this right here. Okay, here it is. And so NPR, so if we have N items and we're picking R of them at a time, uh, like if there's five people and we need to pick three of them for a committee or something or for a, a whatever, then um, this is the formula. Now we can use our calculator function, but in questions where we're solving for N, we need to use this formula, uh, okay? So let's just take a let's just take a look at it here. So n over n minus r, right? So if we take a look at b here, we're going to focus on b. N pick three is nine ninety. Now you could just do trial and error, I suppose, but obviously we're trying to figure out how we can use the equation to solve, not by trial and error, right? So n p r generally, what was the expression for that? It was n factorial divided by n minus r, which is 3 factorial. And we know that that equals 990. So here's the equation that we're starting with. We're trying to solve for n. Okay. So <clears throat> it's, not, it's not necessarily just as easy as uh, isolating for n, because n is, first of all, trapped inside this binomial, also trapped inside a factorial situation. So we can't just pull an n out. And we can't do that up here either, okay? So what we have to do is we have to understand what this side of the equation actually means. So what we have to do is kind of start to break this down a bit. And so we have 990 equals n factorial. Um, you could actually, yeah, let's change n factorial. What does n factorial um, actually mean? Well, it means n times what? What would the next thing in line be? Yeah, n minus 1. And then it would be n minus 2, right, as we go down the list. And so this actually becomes n, not m, n minus 3, and so on. And that n so on turns into this. And that's what sh uh, exactly what we have on the bottom. So if you can imagine this, we have n minus 3 times n minus 4 times n minus 5, all the way down until we get to 1, wherever that might be. But we have the same set of factors on the top and the bottom. So this now is gone. Everyone see that? And what we're left with is 990 equals this right here. Now from here, there's really two ways you could go about solving this. Okay? And the first way that probably comes to your mind first, and like you, when you came and asked me about this, is awesome. If you multiply this out and get a polynomial, and then bring 990 over to make zero on this side, then you can uh, solve for the factors and find out what n is, right? Fol solve for the zero and find out what n is. And that's what you did first, right? Now, let's do that because I think that's what most of you would actually do. So I'll just make some more room here. So can you just, when you fact uh, multiplied all this out, what did, what did you end up getting? Um, n to the n cubed. Yeah. Okay, so uh, plus 2n minus, okay, and 990 right here, okay. So there wasn't, okay, there's a 1n there. So we have a cubed, we have a squared, we have n to the power of 1 and really n to the power of 0. So here's our polynomial. Now, <clears throat> if you have a graphing calculator, right, if you have a graphing calculator we can use here, you can graph this and then find out where the 0 is. Right? Find out where the zero, uh, the x-intercept is. And that x value would be the n value for this. Now there may be one or two or three or whatever, right? But um, you could do it that way. You could also, uh, the long division method, remember? You could do synthetic division and you could find out that, um, what was yours again? So you had n minus 11 times and what was left over when you did synthetic uh, division. Okay, so this is where Kirsten got to, and she said, okay, well, I know that um, n equals 11, 
is one of the uh, solutions, but I can't really factor this anymore and I can't figure out you know, what the other solutions might be. And at this point, okay, so if there's no way you can factor this, then what you want to do is you want to check to see if there even is a factor here. So do you remember, let's see, um, do you remember the quadratic formula? x equals negative b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Do you remember that one? So this is a quadratic. We could try and solve for this, but remember, the big part about this is that we can actually find out if there is a, a root at all by checking the... Uh, discriminant? Is that the discriminant or the determinant? Discriminant, I believe. So uh, we can just plug these values in to see if we're going to have a negative value underneath the root sign. Because if we get a negative value, we know that there's no roots. If we get a positive value, we know that there is. So b squared, this would actually be uh, 64, right? Minus 4 times a is 1, c is 90. So 4 times 90 is 360, right? So we're going to have a negative number here. So what that means is that there are no roots associated with that uh, factor. And that means that n equals 11 is our solution. And that makes sense because, you know, we want to find out, you know, what the total would be. So it's greater than 3, so that's good. And, of course, n is the only solution to this. So 11 pick 3 is 990. Okay, yep. Okay, okay, so synthetic division refresher, yes, we can do that. Let's do that. So the synthetic division, now there's parts to the synthetic division, okay? And I'm just going to move this. Um, uh, I guess I can leave that there. So th synthetic division, you want to make your elongated L, and then you want to choose factors, um, like for in this case, N plus or minus something, and this number here has to be a factor of 990, okay? So you're going to look for 9, you're going to look for 3, you're going to look for 11, you're going to look for 10, right? Um, and that sort of thing. So 10, 11, 9, you know, 3. Those are the ones that come to mind. 1, obviously, you could try that. So if you pick, let's say, 10, okay? If you pick 10, and you say, I'm going to try n minus 10. Well, you could go straight to synthetic division. The other thing you could do to check this first is just to plug positive 10 in for n to see if you get a zero on this side. That will tell you right away if it is a factor or not. So that's the, um, um, that's the factor theorem that we learned earlier in the course, factor theorem slash remainder theorem. If the remainder is zero, then x minus whatever that number is is a factor. Okay, so we learned that. So you could try that, put 10 in here, and you'd find that you wouldn't get zero. So you could do that before you do synthetic division. If you try 11, so 11 cubed minus 3 times 11 squared plus 2 times 11 minus 990, this should get you zero. That should equal zero. Then you know that n minus 11 is a factor. Okay? So then we try that. So to your question. You put, if it's n minus 11 that you're going to try, you put positive 11 over here. On the top row is where you put the coefficients of the polynomial. Okay? And the other thing to mention is you need to have all of the terms uh, of the polynomial represented. So if it's a uh, degree 3, you need to have the n cubed term uh, coefficient represented the n squared, the n to the 1, and the n to the 0. You need to have all of those terms in order, descending order, and all of them accounted for. If we didn't have an n term, let's say, we'd have to put that coefficient as a 0 for all this to work. So I'm going to put 1 here, I'm going to put negative 3 here, put positive 2 there, and negative 990 right here. And I always put a little box underneath the last term because this should be 0 if we've um, assessed this as a factor correctly. This should end up to be zero in here, it should. Okay, so let's check it out. So we drop the one, and we put that first one down there always. That always, have, whatever coefficient it is, we put that down there. Then we multiply 11 times one, and you put that number there. Then you add, so 11 plus negative three would be eight. And that's the first, so that's the cycle, and you start that over again, so now you do 11 times one. Or, sorry, 11 times 8 now, like you did 11 times 1. And that's going to be 88. 
and you add this, and that's going to be 90. 11 times 90 now, you put that answer there, that should be positive 990. And of course, when you add those up, you do get zero. So that's how we got the, um, the other factors. So we have n minus 11, and then we have, and this is actually an n squared because we started with a cube there. So it's one degree less than the original polynomial. So that's n squared, it's a plus eight, so that's gonna be the n, and it's a plus 90, and that's gonna be your constant. So that's what you get after that first round of synthetic division, okay? Now, I do wanna quickly go over the other method here, okay? I know we're spending a long time on this, but there is another way to look at this, and this actually is, if you can actually see this, this is gonna help you for uh, if you end up taking the uh, integrated calculus course that we offer here, if you end up doing that after the AP exam, you take AP, you, first of all you take calculus 30, then if you continue on with AP, you'll continue on with the 30L. And this sort of skill, this is the sort of way you want to be able to view things, okay? And it, this is actually pretty cool, and it does save a lot of time and effort if you can pick this up. And really it takes practice, it takes just an awareness uh, uh, and an understanding of, of factors and numbers, but this is going to be especially um, especially helpful when we integrate using partial fractions, okay? And that'll happen approximately a year from now for some of you lucky, lucky students. So watch this, this is what I mean. If you have this point right here, you can multiply all this out and do the method that we did, and that's what you would probably default to, but, but, watch this. If you see this as some number times one number less than the first one, times one number that is two less than the first one, what you're looking for are factors of 990. There's three, fa if, if you can find 990, if you can um, decompose 990 into three factors where you have three numbers in a row, that's what this is saying. There's three factors that are three consecutive whole number factors that multiply to 990. And if you can view 990 as that, you're going to solve for n. So watch this. 990 actually equals 11 times 10 times 9. Now, how does that help? Well, that helps out a lot because, guess what? What is n now? n is 11. You see that? So you didn't have to go through actually all that work. You could find out right now that n is 11. Now, that's just not something that I expect you to be able to see right now, but this is a factor and then another number that's one less and another number that's two less. The numbers that fit that pattern for the number 990 would be 11 times 10 times 9. And so right away you can use logic to say that n is 11. And you wouldn't have to go through all that work. So that works sometimes here when you're solving. Okay? Any questions? Okay, so n is 11, and of course you can double check that. Uh, you can double check that, right, by doing 11, and then where's, where is it on mine here? Oh, 11, pick, 3, and that should be 990. So an n equals 11. All right?